Jordan Peterson was on a panel of actual stand-up comedians and completely bombed. Nobody else is talking about this, so I feel like I kind of have to. There's a whole lot of comments that say things like, man, Jordan Peterson understood the assignment more than most of these comedian guests that come on. Jordan Peterson contributed more than Joe Rogan changed my mind. Absolutely not. Jordan Peterson bombed harder than Amy Schumer doing stand-up. Jordan Peterson bombed harder than Aquaman 2. Jordan Peterson bombed harder than a guy living in the woods mailing something to a bunch of higher ups at colleges ladies and gentlemen your guests tonight are jordan peterson tyler fisher and kim congdick the fucking i mean look at this suit jacket come on now are you telling me that this guy doesn't look like he can make the funniest of jokes literally joe dirt in the background is going to be funnier just because of the way he looks jordan peterson yeah. <laughs> Tyler Fisher. oh and, and also Kong these other people now, here's the thing. When you bring Jordan Peterson onto any podcast, you should not be expecting goofs and gaffs. You should be expecting him to have a deep dive into your life and tell you how terrible you've done throughout most of your existence. Sometimes Kill Tony can be a good show, but this is kind of like bringing on Steven Crowder and expecting something good. Politics aside, these guys just aren't funny. And one of the great minds of our time, absolute genius, starting his own university. Uh, you can't even make this up. First guest we we've ever had on this show in 11 years that has a university coming out. The Peterson Academy. Yes, the Peterson Academy is coming soon. It's like out now and uh, his book, November 12th. We who wrestle with God. Whoa. Jordan Peterson is here, ladies and gentlemen. We who wrestle with God. I have to put in my pre-order. I'm ready to attend Peterson Academy. Peterson Academy sounds like something that you would brutally make fun of children who go to this school. You're at Peterson Academy, son of a Peter. I mean, according to Cambridge Dictionary, Peter is a rude word for a penis. So if you're son of a Peter, I don't quite know how I'm supposed to take you seriously, especially with this horrendous goddamn jacket on. Take this off. Not that I want to see what's underneath, but I'm horrified at just the overlapping patterns. The way that Kill Tony fans have framed this is like, you know, Jordan Peterson did pretty good. You know, he is a psychologist. He is whatever. He did hold his own as somebody who's not normally a comedian. Just bring on comedians. He's not funny. Listen to some of the jokes he makes and then the amount of laughter he gets. It's almost like if you had a grandparent with Alzheimer's and they make a joke where it's like, ooh, look at the birds out the window. They look so nice. And then you go, ah, because it may be their last joke. You know, a lot of it doesn't make sense. Here's a Jordan Zinger. Uh, maybe I need to join a university. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> One thing's for sure, you're not Jordan, getting... do you have a, some degree where you don't need to be smart? <laughs> All degrees are like that now. <laughs> And I honestly don't think that he meant that as a joke. He goes, all degrees are like that now, but you're starting a university? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. You're going to pay a shit ton of money to attend my university, and it's going to mean diddly squat. That's not a good advertisement for what you do, especially nine minutes in. And I like the way that he answers it, like, all degrees are like that now. Almost trying to invite this dude to have a conversation with him about how degrees aren't what they used to be. Do you have a, some degree where you don't need to be smart? <laughs> <laughs> All degrees are like that now. Uh -huh. And now expand on why and why your university is different. This next clip, you've got the guy next to Jordan. I don't know his name. Trying to make some goofs, trying to lighten the mood, take it away from the promotion of his new university that I think will receive funding no matter what. I think these struggling comedians may need some more financial help than he does. In the intro, they're like, so here's his book. He's also got a university. He's crushing it on YouTube right now. And then all the comedians next to him are like, if I break 5,000 views, I go out to Red Robin with my family and celebrate. Guy next to Jordan makes a joke, and then Jordan tries to do some sort of an add-onism. It fails. You're kind of like Jordan, me. you, you went to you Estonia. Could, you oh. could be the pedophile and the kid. You kind of, <laughs> that's kind of, we both have that vibe in a, in a way. I catch pedophiles on the weekend. I just hang out at the playground. <laughs> He's an auto-pedophile? Auto-pedophile. <laughs> Oh, oh, you have a, I that's just, a wait, 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 where did the laughs go on that one? And you know that a joke bombs when you go, <laughs> eh. 
I swear, I mean, that was pretty funny. I came up with that one myself. <laughs> He's an auto pedophile? Auto pedophile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have a. That's a Carl Jung. Shut the fuck up. Now, Jordan Peterson, he has a problem with the trains, and he loves to make jokes about it, even if they don't hit. I would try doing an accent like the last guy, and you'll be famous fucking touring with this guy in no time. <laughs> Okay. I'll let you eat my trans pussy. <laughs> oh. It's like a if, veggie burger. If, if it works. Oh, yeah. Veggie burger is disgusting. You can right? get Bad those gross. installed for free in Canada, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the fucking thing. When somebody claps at your joke, there's another sign it's not working. There's a callback. I don't know when they were talking about trans vagina, but Tony brings it back. He goes, yeah, you can eat me boop, boop, boop. And then Jordan goes, you can get those installed for free in Canada. Canada. How does that work, Jordan? Installed for free? Like the parts are just already out there, like car parts, and you just need to find somebody to install them. Oh, I got a good deal on eBay for, you know, vagina. And also people's time is worth a lot, Jordan. You're telling me that you wouldn't pay some kind of service fee to get that puss installed? It's like a if, veggie if, burger. If it works. <laughs> oh yeah, well, veggie burger is disgusting. You can get those bread. installed for free in Canada, by the way. <laughs> You can to a crowd of people in Austin, Texas. They don't give a fuck. You literally could have said you can get those installed for free in Cyprus and they'd go. They don't give a fuck about Canada. Now, there is a bit of a problem that we find. There is a very loud mouth woman on stage and I don't know about you, but I don't like that kind of stuff. She makes a pretty offensive joke and uh, Jordan shuts down. Closest you've come to a lesbian experience, anything? I ate some uh, Middle Eastern pussy actually. Whoa, oh my oh, goodness. Oh jeez. Wow. Whoa. I think get... she's the bluntest <laughs> comedian I've heard for a long time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's good. Wow, it's she's good. awfully dirty. I think she may be the bluntest comedian that I've come across in recent times. My face when women talk about puss. Uh, whoa! <laughs> Jeez Louise, this is awfully fun. It's like taking a grandparent on a roller coaster where they go, whoa, that one shocked me. Or like grandma to magic Mike. Cocks in her face and she goes, whoa, but I kind of like it. Now, with the last joke, he did get taken aback a little bit. He went, whoo, holy shit. When did women start talking like that? But he does enjoy this next joke and he shows it. For a little context, the comedian on stage is talking about a time that her mother discovered that her husband was cheating on her. She had some girl come to her house and vandalize her car and, uh, try to break into the house and a lot of stuff like that. And so you saw, they saw her on video or something? Yeah, she had to get a camera and report it to the police. Mm. Was I'm she secretly scared it's my mom. <laughs> 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 Why are we laughing into a mic? You are in the middle of a stage. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, six microphones for people who are talking and he has decided that his laughter is worth laughing into a microphone for. You can actually hear the audience react to him being so unaware of going <laughs> like the joke that the girl in the end says isn't really that funny. Was I'm she secretly scared it's my mom. <laughs> 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 this guy in the background, I think, is a perfect example of how a normal person would respond to that joke. He goes, eh, yeah, that wasn't really funny. I'm going to put my head down. And then Jordan Peterson laughs as loud as he can into the microphone. And he goes, Was I'm she secretly scared. It's my mom. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. Not really. Oh. <laughs> I mean, look at this guy. He's laughing for no reason. He actually doesn't understand comedy, but he's on the number one live comedy podcast in the world. So everybody's having a really good time. We're about 26 minutes into the show and Jordan Peterson says something that completely kills the mood. Just watch everybody around him. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. So why stand up for you? So. Oh, everybody was laughing, talking about like crazy experiences. And then he asks a genuine question. Read the fucking room. I've tried a lot of hobbies in my life and I've never really found anything that I'm good at. And uh, the first time I tried stand up, it, it honestly changed my life. It's what I imagine doing heroin is like. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got pretty addicted to stand up comedy. Some of my favorite comedians are actually 
you, Jordan Peterson. And he goes, oh, yikes. Nothing I've said tonight is actually funny. So that's a shock. Why stand up comedy? It seems like you aren't very good at it. So why the fuck did you choose this? Good question, Jordan. You thought that the last one kind of killed the mood. What about this one where a guy is on stage who's very boisterous and crazy and he may have some other stuff going on. I don't know. They've alluded to it. That's not my assumption. Jordan has no clue what's going on and says, so what character are you playing? And he was smoking crack out of a Lego, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm Jack Shaw. Oh my God. That's Jack so awesome. Shaw. Good set. Crack Lego. For sure. Very entertaining. Attacking a homeless man for 60 seconds. <laughs> yeah. You got your revenge. Jordan, what do you think of the great Jack Shaw? Who's the character you're playing, or is that actually you? <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, he's me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so when did you discover that and decide to capitalize on it? I, the last time I was on this show. I mean, in some cases, that could be a joke. Who's the character you're playing? Is it like Andy Samberg? And he's like, no, it's actually me. Silence. He goes, oh, when did you figure out to capitalize on that? Oh, I don't know. Uh, yesterday. <laughs> oh, fuck. Speaking of timing, perfect timing. This guy is phenomenal at the work that he does. He actually chimes in at what I would consider the perfect moment of the show. It is something specific that you're into, and it is the love of your mother. <laughs> well, what does that mean, Jordan? Do you have an analysis on why a guy would be into MILFs specifically? Why would someone like would know. be into older women? Like, is there like a psychological uh, reason for that? I don't know. I mean, maybe that's... <laughs> Do you smoke weed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just stayed silent. That was crazy. That was legitimately like, oh, you were talking to me. Tony's like, Jordan? Oh, over here. Jordan actually explained something that he probably knows. Why are people attracted to MILFs? Is there something maternally that they're attracted to? And then he goes, And then other people have to chime in because they're like, what the fuck is going on? Well, what does that mean, Jordan? Do you have an analysis What's on why answer? a guy I mean, would be into MILFs specifically? Why would someone like would be into older women? Like, yeah, is there like a psychological uh, reason for that? Oh. I don't know. I mean, maybe oh. that's... Oh. Do you smoke weed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems like he does. He prefers benzodiazepines. Are you attracted to your mom at all when you're high? No, just when I'm sober. Okay. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. Now, you know who doesn't find that funny? Jordan, there's something twisted with this guy. I have to get into his head. I have to learn his psyche. <laughs> so now we're about 45 minutes into the show. The benzos are kicking in. He is twisted off his mind. And one of the comedians who pops up on stage went to one six at the Capitol was charged with some things talks about her experience it sounds absolutely bonkers and Jordan doesn't ask someone who was at Jan 6 anything about Jan 6 but kind of changes the subject he was like I was seeing all the other tourists come out and was so happy I said do you want to go in honey and he's like yeah mm. and, and we like... went in there and then next thing you know we were trapped gassed oh. hit all this stuff but <laughs> me rioting is this <laughs> What is going on? It was peaceful. Oh, <laughs> it is. I didn't want to be hurt. Making That's Karen's good... great again. That's what we're doing. Uh, Karen's. <laughs> How did you get so tough? Oh, oh that... I swear to God. You know, I've been listening to this show for a little while. I found a lot of it cringe, a lot of it weird. Matt Reif was on it recently, and that fucking blew. But there has never been a guest who goes, how do you get so tough? Complete silence. It's not a joke. He's asking like genuine fucking questions. It's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get so tough? Oh, that's actually a good question. <laughs> how did you get so tough that you cowered in a corner during Jan 6th at the Capitol? Huh? What are you talking about? This person literally just said, you know, my rioting was covering up my head. And he goes, that's pretty badass. I wouldn't go anywhere near that many people. I'm actually terrified on stage right now next to about five other humans. <laughs> I don't know how to respond. I don't compute. So now I'm going to skip to about an hour 16 in and you'll notice something. Jordan just holds the mic at his mouth, unlike any of the other panel members, because he's just coming up with random shit to say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dr. Him. Peterson. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm, I'm sitting big... here thinking, just how much can you drink? 
A lot. A lot. How much? Come on, tell me. I'll compare it to Northern Albertan standards. Like how many? How many? How many double martinis? I probably could put away six. Wow. Yeah, uh, I could. <laughs> What's the craziest thing? He is high out of his fucking mind. What is he saying? Hey man, the goal is not to have you be fucking bleeped. I know that you don't like this media propaganda going on here, but this guy is Joe Bidening. If you showed me this image in a photo of Joe Biden, I would say that they look the exact goddamn same. You know, I haven't seen how Joe's cognitive ability has been recently, but just by this photo, I can tell you right now, there's nothing behind these eyes right here. Benzos are a class of depressant drugs that slow brain activity to produce a calming or drowsy effect. This guy looks a little drowsy to me. Sleepy Jordan. That's what I'm going to call him now. We're getting towards the tail end of the episode and Jordan has yet another what the fuck are you saying moment. Hell yeah. Jordan, what do you think about this guy? <laughs> I think he, he dresses from the shop in my hometown in Northern Alberta. <laughs> Who roasted? Who gets that reference? Name the shop. Yeah, he looks like he dresses from my hometown shop. Nobody's going to understand this reference, but to me, it's pretty funny. <laughs> you know, the face that I make when something's really funny is like I'm shitting my pants. He dresses from the shop in my hometown in northern Alberta. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Put me on, Kill Tony, and I would just prefer to stay fucking quiet. If I have nothing to say, I'll shut my fucking mouth. This guy doesn't know how to. With his history, he's looking like uh, Lil Xan's uncle. I'll you making good money at Chili's? Yeah, sure. <laughs> not not crazy amounts, but I'm getting by. He's, he's trying. All right. What's how, how do you work on your comedy? Oh, what do you I, do to 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 like? I try to dedicate time. Oh, couldn't even finish the question though. How do you do two two two? How do you work on your comedy? He's only asking because he needs some fucking pointers. I'm every day to writing. How much time? Oh, at least like 10, 20 minutes. Ooh. Even if I can't do that, I'll try and jot something down. If I can't, I at least go over old material and. Yeah. Find stuff that I can work on at least. Mm. <laughs> Think you ever... you're dedicated enough? Oh. Or should you do more than that? Oh. You know what? Probably not. Hey, the crowd's silent. I'm sensing maybe some crickets or some dust going across the fucking screen. You think you're dedicated enough, or do you think you should be doing fucking more, you lazy bitch? I mean, there's a lot of greats that uh, that worked at Chili's and focused on their dreams for 10 to 20 minutes a day. <laughs> I believe that's how Kobe got so good at basketball. Over the they talk about that 10 to 20 minutes a day. Now, I do think that's funny. If this guy has actually moved to Austin, Texas, and he wants to become a comedian, obviously you have to dedicate more time. But this guy is trying to think of a joke, which has already been said by Tony over here. You know, that's how I heard that Kobe Bryant got so good. He did 10, 20 minutes a day. That's a much better route than Jordan going, you know, do you feel like you're doing a good job and putting a lot of time and effort into what you're doing? Because you know, it's not working, bucko. <laughs> so Canadian. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.